Hey guys, it's Brian here from Diesel and Iron. Today I'm over here helping out Heavy Metal Learning. We're gonna talk about common rookie mistakes I see made in one of my favorite machines on the job, the loader. So without further ado, let's go hop in the cab. All right, so welcome to the cab. So the first thing I wanna say is that Randy has already done one of these videos with some common mistakes that new loader operators make. And he's done a fantastic job with that video. So we're gonna put a link up above. Uh, go check that video out because he does make a couple really good points. The first of all that I wanna reiterate is use traction control in the loader. Wheel spin is not helping you get into a pile any better. It's just damaging the machine. So make sure you use traction control and limit your wheel spin. That's number one. Number two is make sure you know what all the buttons in the cab do. There's a lot of adjustability in these loaders, uh, even though it doesn't seem like it. So make sure you go through the menus and you figure out what's going on with the machine before you decide to run all over the job site like you know what you're doing. And finally, the third is, when you go into a pile, make sure that you have the correct bucket angle so that you're not digging a hole or you're not riding up on the pile. So those are three points that Randy made in his video that are really great. I did wanna reiterate those. So like I said, go watch that video if you've got a minute. Now getting into my tips and tricks video. Number one, and this is a freebie. This isn't even like a rookie mistake. This is just a freebie. If you think a loader is an easy machine, prepare to be humbled. Uh, loaders are very deceiving because they come off as it just being a bucket and a boom arm and that's all there is to it, like anyone can run a loader. The reality is the loader is one of the more complex uh, jobs on the job site, not only in what you're doing while you're operating it, but believe it or not, there's quite a bit that goes into keeping that bucket flat and level and doing a good job and being efficient. So let's get into it. The number one rookie mistake that I see guys make when they get into a loader is not being used to the steering. And what I mean by that is anytime I steer, I'm gonna start slow and then I'm gonna increase my turn speed and then I'm gonna come out of it slow. Likewise, I'm gonna go fast and then slow down. A lot of guys in the beginning, it's very easy to get into a situation to where it's very jerky. That's everyone's initial instinct. So fair warning, you're going to do this the first time you get in a loader. That being said, don't let it get to you. Everybody does it. I did it when I started too. But that's the number one mistake I see guys make is it needs to be very smooth motions when it comes to steering in the loader so you don't get that jerkiness of movement. All right, the number two common mistake that I see guys make actually has to come with operating the machine. And the problem is too many people think about it as driving a car or a backhoe. The beauty of a loader is it articulates in the middle, which means you can do some really tight turns. You don't have to back all the way up to get straight. And I'll give you a prime example of this pile in front of us. So most people, when they're getting lined up on this pile, they're gonna make sure that we back up and we get perfectly straight up against the pile so that we can get a nice, good, you know, square level shot at the pile. And if we were digging in really hard material where we needed all the power we can to get into that pile, that's absolutely true. But this is snow. We don't have to worry about that. And so instead of worrying about getting all lined up on the pile, let's come at this like we were coming at it from elsewhere on the job. Instead of me trying to start from this position here, back up, swing it wide and come around. Instead, what we can do is we're just gonna cut right into the pile and we can start pushing. And you can see that because this is a lighter material, so if this were sand, pea stone, gravel, anything like that, we could still get a full bucket and we can do a great job without having to get square on the pile. Likewise, because people think about this as driving a car, if I were gonna load a truck, let's say, you know, going to our camera over here and I'll show you the outside view, Let's say there was a truck sitting in front of that camera that we were gonna load out of this pile. The common mistake I see operators do when they get into a loader is they back all the way up until they're totally straight and then they go forward. And what happens is you lose a lot of cycle time doing that. And so we would go into our pile here. I'm not actually gonna scoop, but we would grab our scoop and I'm only gonna back up to about here. We don't need to go any further back because I can flip over to forward I can turn into that truck and right there we're dumping in our truck. 
That's all there is to it. You have this beautifully crafted machine that its job is to turn tight corners. You don't need to get perfectly square onto a truck. You can do very simple, quick movements and that's gonna make for faster cycle times. So don't try to drive a loader like a regular vehicle. You do need to get used to the maneuverability of a loader. All right, so another common mistake I see guys make, and I'm gonna get lined up on the camera, the outside view for this one. The other common mistake I see is that when guys go into a pile, they prop themselves up with the bucket. So right there, my bucket is on the ground and I have down pressure on that bucket. I'm going to take a scoop. What guys will often do is going into the pile, they prop this sucker way off the ground and you can already see that the float's kicking in, it's pushing me back down. But they get that thing propped up and they think that's gonna give them more traction, they're gonna get a bigger bite out of the pile. Actually, the opposite is true. So when I've got my front wheels off the ground, that's two wheels that aren't providing traction to get into the pile. It's not getting you a bigger bite, it's not getting you a bigger scoop, you're actually losing forward power going into the pile. Likewise, I see guys when they go to back drag, that's my bucket on the ground. In fact, that's a little, little much. Right there, my bucket is on the ground and I have down pressure on my bucket. It does me no good trying to back drag. Sorry, we went into float again. It does me no good to back drag if my front wheels are off the ground. In fact, it does the opposite. The way a loader works is you have an axle that articulates in the back and your front axle is your stable axle. So in a situation like this where we're on level ground, all we wanna do is skim the top. The second, and you'll notice when I take my wheels off the ground, we start to lean to this side because our front wheels, the stable wheels, are no longer on the ground. Instead, we're relying on our back axle, which is gonna let us move all over. So if we wanna back drag and keep the ground flat and smooth, I'm gonna only put enough down pressure that we've got some, some resistance on the ground, and then we're just gonna back drag. And you can see that gives us a really, really nice, smooth finish. But if my wheels are off the ground, I'm following whatever contour the ground is doing behind me, and we're gonna start digging off of this right side here. It's not gonna be a finished product. And it's also not gonna give me the ability to steer while I'm doing this. So don't prop yourself off of the ground. It doesn't do you any benefit to get those front wheels off of the ground when you're back dragging. Okay, so another common mistake I see new operators make, especially when they get into machines that are newer and have the return to dig function, is they become overly reliant upon the return to dig function to figure out where their bucket level is. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So on newer machines, if we pretend like we're gonna dump into a truck, we can dump our load, and the hydraulics are cold, so you'll have to forgive me for that. And now if we wanna bring our bucket level again, Instead of doing it ourselves by eye, all I'm gonna do is pull that control all the way over because I have the function turned on, and it's gonna return our bucket to level. Now, I can set that to whatever I want it to be. So I could set level to being like this, or I could set level to being like that. Those aren't level. If I'm a new operator and I don't know how to adjust that, now I have no ability to get my bucket level. I'm reliant upon this system and I haven't learned the actual skill to get my bucket level. And so I highly advise when you first start learning a loader, turn that function off. It's a button over here on the right. Uh, they call it the tilt kick out on this machine. Turn it off. Get used to the sight picture of looking at the corner of your bucket and figuring out where level is because that's going to serve you far better than letting the machine do it for you because there's a couple aspects that are gonna change over time. The first is you're not always gonna be in the same machine and so it might not be the same level indicator on the machine and you're gonna to have to get used to a different sight picture, you're gonna to have to relearn that skill. Number two is over time, the cutting edge on the front of the bucket is going to change shape. And so while this may work as level today, here in a week, I may have to actually tilt my bucket down a little bit more to account for the wear on the front edge of the cutting edge. So that's something that's gonna change over time. And if you don't learn the skill of how to properly level your bucket, you're gonna fall on your face when it comes to being able to run a loader. Likewise, I will say these machines also have a return to dig function, which is where it automatically lowers the boom arms to a predetermined position. They also have a prepare to dump function. I don't know what it's actually called, but it will raise the boom arms up as if you're going to dump into a dump truck. Uh, I will highly advise you, unless you are in a quarry or a pit somewhere where you are consistently dumping at the same height, consistently going and carrying at the same height, 
turn those settings off, uh, they will only cause you issues in getting your way. And a prime example is a lot of times you get a little aggressive on the controls when you're raising your bucket. And, and just like our return to dig function, once you go past that detent, it's going to automatically take those boom arms up for you. Well, when you're raising your boom and you go past that detent, if you have that function on, it's going to keep going with the boom. If you're under power lines or some other situation where you don't want the booms to go that high, there's a very good chance that as a new operator, you might panic and you might not be able to stop those booms in time before they get up into something that gets you in trouble. So I would highly advise you turn off those two functions unless you are in some sort of a pit or quarry situation. All right, one of the final topics I wanna to cover that I see new operators do, uh, I can't really fully demonstrate in this machine, unfortunately, because of the way the gearing works, but on larger loaders, what you can do is you can set the loader up to where it pretty much starts in second gear all the time and runs in second gear and then increases through the gearing. It doesn't drop the transmission down into first gear unless you tell it to. And what ends up happening is guys get going into piles not realizing that they need to manually step the transmission down. Generally, this is done with a button on your twin stick models. You'll have a button here on your armrest. Uh, on your joystick models, a lot of time it may be a trigger or a button here on the back of your controller. And so while I can't demonstrate the actual step down, I will demonstrate when you would use this. And so what we would do is we would come into our pile here and we would be in second gear going at this speed because the machine is just always going to bottom out at second gear. Once we get into our pile, as soon as we start feeling some resistance on the machine, so right about here, this is where I would pull my trigger and I would step the transmission down. And then we can get into our pile, we can be aggressive, and we can get a nice big scoop because our machine has the power to get into it because we've stepped it down to first gear. A lot of new operators don't do this or they don't realize it, and so they really struggle to get a full bucket or they flat out kill the machine, just depending on the situation. So always make sure that you're aware of what gear your transmission is in when you go into piles, and if it's not automatically stepping down to first gear, make sure you know where that step down button is. I personally like running loaders with the machine set to where it's always in second gear unless I tell it to go to first because there's, there's actually two reasons. The first reason is it's really jarring to start in first gear because there's just so much torque there that the machine really jumps out of the gate. The second reason is unless I'm going into a pile, I don't need that crazy amount of torque. I do need speed and I can get up to speed a lot quicker if I'm not having to shift through a really quick first gear to get into second gear to then get into third gear. If I can start in second all of the time unless I need first, that just makes me that much more efficient on the job. So that about covers my loader tips and tricks. Again, these are just some of the common mistakes I see on the job that really makes people stand out as being new into a loader. I will tell you this, like I said earlier, loader is not an easy machine, so cut yourself some slack if you're getting into a loader for the first time. Certainly don't get discouraged, you'll get it over time. So this is, like I said, Brian with Diesel and Iron. We're here with Heavy Metal Learning today. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next video.